The draft is right around the corner, and we're going to let you know who you need to be watching for. And I'll tell you the guys that I believe and Jeff believe should go at 74, 98, and 111 in this draft for the Cleveland Browns. You won't want to miss it. This is your episode of the Locked on Browns podcast. You are locked on Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LLB, the Lockdown Browns podcast, brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ. I'm sorry, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. You know, we only do this five days a week. We shouldn't be <laughs> screwing those things up. Also, Garrett Bush at G Bush 91, panelist on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Monday through Friday, live on YouTube. Make sure you guys are checking that out for all your Guardians, Cavaliers, Browns, and you know, just overall chicanery, I would say. The Barbershop, 92.3 The Fan, Saturday mornings. G posted up there week in, week out with your latest Cleveland sports coverage. We appreciate everybody makes this podcast their first listen. And to the day oneers, obviously, you know, you are integral to any and all success this show has. This Mock Draft Monday and final Mock Draft Monday episode of Locked On Browns is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Visit BetterHelp.com slash on today to get 10% off your first month. Well, Jeff, let's talk about what we got on tap for today. Uh, we will get to the number one overall biggest bust in the history of the Cleveland Browns since 2010. And I'm I, I, he's a quarterback. We've drafted a couple of them. We'll let you know what quarterback fits that mold. Coming could have probably done you, one just on quarterbacks, but we, oh, we could have did. Don't <laughs> listen. That's content, Jeff. Don't be too long. Give that away. We write that down for real. <laughs> <laughs> And coming up after coming up also, Jeff will let you know his personal picks for 74, 98, and 111. Guys, he believes would be his dream candidates. If they're there on the board, this is who he would take at those picks. But first, if Jeff's gonna give his, I gotta give mine. So let's get right off into it. Uh Jeff 74, 98, and 111. And when I looked at this, I wanted to find guys that I could get ready to go on each and every level. And so at 74. Uh, just so happens, just so happens that this guy, um, <laughs> Mr. Carl Brooks, was there and available. I said, look, I'll take that. Uh, when you look at it, uh, when his, his, uh, you, you take a look at what his scouting report is. Um, he said, Brooks has uh, the kind of movement that, and skills that test the lineman's athleticism right off the snap as he can create havoc on a quick slant or stunt, combines that with uh, lively hands to make sure he keeps his body clean. His role is a three technique, right? Um, they have him listed as an edge rusher sometimes, which they may kick him out a little bit. Um, but he's a, he's a prototypical three technique. That's what the Browns need. And given the troubles with Perrion Winfrey, I thought this was a place that the Browns could go to find another young guy. As you can see, they have a second round grade on him. Um, Brooks has the uh, a kind of athletic profile on the field production uh, that is intriguing at the next level. He provided it on tape with no fluke at the senior bowl. So play well at the senior bowl, six foot four, 300 pounds uh, guys only uh, he'll be about to be 23, but he has a size athleticism. Um, and uh, he, he definitely is a guy um, that I think if he's available on the board to me, I could not pass him up uh, at 78. What are your thoughts on, on Carl Brooks, uh, uh, Jeff? I'm a fan of the player, and the thing I like, and this is where you know where you kind of touched on it, six four three hundred, you know, but can play inside and out. This is stuff we're talking about here, you know. So he, um, you know, look, and is he going to be a starting defensive tackle? Look, we we still don't know where the second defensive starting tackle is coming from. Obviously, right now there's going to be numerous candidates. Is there another veteran that's going to be brought in here? Um, but for Carl Brooks, this gives you the advantage to start maybe doing some different things. With Carl Brooks and ability to line up outside, you know, you could kick a Miles Garrett inside. You could kick a Alex Wright inside in the obvious passing situations. Um, and as many said for Carl Brooks, he was probably the um, biggest 
omission from the NFL combine size play tape. It's all there. This would be something that certainly would help as, you know, Jim Schwartz wants to solidify that defensive line rotation from the inside to the out. All right. So let's, let's keep it moving. Let's get to pick 98. Uh, this was a guy we kind of previewed before when we were doing our mock drafts um, through our series and he, his name just kept coming up. Just so happens that my man, Jamie Robinson was available at safety. Uh, you know, according to PFF, Robinson is arguably the most complete safety in the draft, uh, has a solid all-around athlete who also has a tremendous tackler. Uh, easy projection to the NFL was of how many hats he has worn in his career across four seasons as a starter. Robinson played 633 snaps in the box. He played 759 snaps deep and 1,348 snaps in the slot. Now, let me give you this. This is tremendous because... You get a guy that has played at all three levels. He played in the box, showing he can tackle guys. He's played deep. So if you want to play him at deep safety and you want to play him back and you want to play him as the angel safety, uh, like so many people like to do nowadays to keep everything in front of him, he's shown that. But he's also shown a lot of snaps in the slot. Uh, and, and when you're in the slot, you're coming up, you're, you're part of the run fits, you're in the run support, you're a blitzer, you're a guy that, that deals with quick twitch guys in the box, uh, in the slot position. So he, this guy is showing at 5'11", 191, uh, and you know the Browns like to keep him young. He's only 22. Uh, this guy is a, a guy who has a, a second or third round pick. We were able to get him pick 98. Jeff, what's your thought on Jamie Robinson? No, I think everybody knows. Look, you know, my Florida State love is always there. But Jamie Robinson, this is a special player. And the thing I truly love, and look, we just said the same thing kind of about Carl Brooks, is if you're not going to be a starting player out of the gate, I want diversity. I want versatility. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we can find a number of, oh, okay, well, our nickel's out this week. Yeah, you know what? Jamie Robinson can do that. Well, you know what? Juan Thornhill's out this week. You know what? Jamie Robinson can do that. Oh, hey, Grant Elbert's out this week. You know what? Jamie Robinson. He can do that. Guy can fill in at three spots. He's very intelligent. Was in charge of all the secondary calls down in Tallahassee. Solid football player. And you got to think when a guy is this intelligent, the transition to special teams, probably something he would be asked to do early in his career. Seems like something that, you know, a fish to water type of thing. And you want players who are leaders. You want players who have, you know, a great background. Yes, I knew he wasn't going to test well at the Combine. And my exact words were after the Combine were, you know, it is what it is. But Jamie Robinson, as long as health permits, is going to be a guy that plays in the NFL for eight to ten seasons. Being a smart, versatile defensive back is huge. You can you will always stick around in a player like Jamie Robinson. Um, you had him in your three. He's not in mine, but I would have zero issues with bringing Jamie Robinson into the fold here. Just a smart, cool, collected football player. Yeah, especially where 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 they got him at. Um, so th this is kind of the funny part about doing these these mocks. You find out that you you get a really a lot of good football players that fall to you, and sometimes when you when you don't have a one or two. You know, you kind of have to dig in the weeds a little bit more, but you'll find that there's there's a little bit of uh, there's some guys left uh, in the third and fourth round that could really help your football team. At one eleven, I really like this pick. Uh, at one eleven, I went with KJ Henry. He was still available, um, and for me, I like to get a guy that I like is tremendous athleticism. Maybe a guy I need to work on with some polish. Maybe I need a, a, a guy to. Um, you know, learn a little bit. Maybe he's only a situational guy, and I think he's a situational guy at this point. He's not the everyday guy at defensive end. Um, when you look at what he's doing, uh, 2022, he finally put it together, 83.1 grade. Um, he played 664 snaps, showing that he can get it, get after a little bit. His sack total and the reason he's still available now is because his production does not match his athleticism. When you look at this guy and the way he can move, he can get upfield. He's a freak athlete. He's a former five-star athlete. When you look at it, you only get 14 hits on a QB, uh, five sacks. That's why you're going to look at look around and say, okay, this is the reason why he, he's, he's still available. However, his, his true set to pass rush grade is a 90.3, and this is what this kid is going to bring. Athleticism, pass rush, pressure. He still needs to get a little bit better in bending and finishing. Um, but with his athleticism, I could not pass him up uh, at, at 111 in, in, in terms of that and seeing if we can find a, a project and use him as a situational pass rusher, Jeff. 
the athleticism is there, certainly. Um, you know, the one-year production, you certainly hope for more. But there's reason you bring players in and you have coaches like Jim Schwartz and you have coaches like Bill Callahan. You know, there's the old line of they don't know what they don't know. Okay, that's great. But the reason that Bill Callahan exists, Jim Schwartz exists, is because they are there to teach you what you don't know. And the other – give me somebody that has everything – but the only thing I got to give him is knowledge. You know, you can't give him elite speed. You can't give him elite side right. size. You can't turn him into you know five star athletes. It's the nuances. It's the intangibles. And this is why you go out and invest in coaches like this. So you take a nice raw athletic guy, and hopefully you get more of him. Um, I'm going to have a defensive end as well here, and then this room will have flipped in one calendar year from Miles Garrett and a whole bunch of defensive ends to now Miles Garrett and four younger kids playing along with him. That is redoing a room right there. Um, so, you know, for Andrew Berry, this makes a ton of sense here. All of this is about getting this defense better, and it's about getting complete defensive line play, everybody working as one, and they've certainly put a lot of effort into doing that to this point. We're going to get to my three here in the next segment. G. Bush, Jeff Lloyd, your latest Lockdown Browns. We appreciate everybody for being along for the ride with us. <clears throat> This episode is brought to you by Better Help. Look, uh, I have two teenage daughters. If there's things that I do not know about, it's life as a teenage girl. But I have to learn it. I have to get better at it. And sometimes I don't have all the answers. So you have to get to know yourself. And that can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. Maybe even our children are as well. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. I've had had numerous conversations, losing my my father and my brother with an 11-month cycle. It was a lot for me. It, it really, you know, because I still had to maintain my marriage. I still had to maintain the fact that I'm a father. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And if you have to switch therapists at any time, there will be no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Welcome back to the Locked On Browns podcast. Uh, thank you for making us your first listener of every each and every day, and Locked On Browns your team every single day. Jeff, we got to my uh, picks at seventy four ninety eight and one eleven. Now, my good sir, you are on the board. Who are you bringing off the board first at seventy four? It's it's funny because you know we did do an episode here, and you know I mentioned how you run through these simulators. And for me, you know, I kept telling you, geez, man, D DN could be something you have to trade up for just because it, it seems like there's about 10 of them. And then once you get to 74, you know, it's like tumbleweeds, it's like crickets, you know, all project type guys. Um, however, running it this last time here from Mock Draft Monday, I finally bagged my guy and I have talked a ton about him. Six foot four, 260 pound defensive end out of Auburn University. Derek Hall has a RAS score, uh, a relative athletic score of over nine. The other thing I love about Derek Hall, speed to power. You know, what is the whole point of rushing the passer? It's supposed to be able to get, get off. And then guess what? You understand that you are going to be smaller than most offensive tackles you go against. So you got to be able to get that punch in there. So as you create that speed, you can get a hit on that offensive lineman, and now all of a sudden there's a little room, a little separation, as you know, G. And you can go in. You can go out. You can go to a swim. You can go to a rip. Uh, the ghost move, which everybody seems to be so infatuated in right. um, now. But a guy like Derek Hall, you know, I love the story. Obviously, you know, a, a micro preemie. So that means Derek Hall was probably born somewhere around two pounds. Obviously, you know, a full grown fledged man at six foot four, 260, played in the SEC, played the legit competition, played the real competition. And if it's not your guy, 
uh, you know, obviously that you added the defensive end position. I bring in Derek Hall. Four fifths of the room changed in one calendar year, and you know now it's a little bit different. You know, Miles, the veteran of the room. You know, Miles now, you know, the dad of the room, so to speak. Here, and you've got a guy like Derek Hall. You've got a guy like Ogbenaya Okoronkwo. You've got a guy like Alex Wright. You've got a guy like Isaiah Thomas. All versatile, all different, all committed. And you know, when you're looking at a star like Miles Garrett. It's kind of hard to, you know, go half ass, so to speak, when you're, you know, star of that room is a talent that Miles is. Yeah, I look at it. Um, love, love the fact that this guy, he's uh he's built. He, I mean, he looks the part, man. You know, this dude comes out, jumps off the tape for you. Once again, athleticism. Uh, you look at his his uh, you know, pass rush grade. Uh, you know, he's been a, a top pass rush, uh, rusher for a while. 81.9 as a sophomore, 81.2 as a junior, 82.6 as a senior. And that means he's consistent. If they add a couple of moves onto his uh, his tool belt uh, in terms of pass rusher moves, this guy can, can, can really, really get after the qu- uh, quarterback. And, you know, I like my I like my SEC uh, guys. I like my, my down south guys with a the D-line. They can move. They nasty. And like you said, Jeff, I'm interested in turning this defensive line room over and getting younger guys that are coming up up, up under the free agents that we got. And now you're learning. We don't have to throw these guys to the fire. All we need these dudes to do is situational football, and, and they're ready to go. Um, pick 98, and we're going to stick here in the SEC. Um, you know, at some point, I still think the Browns are going to bring in a veteran defensive tackle whether it's now, whether it's somewhere over the summer, because there's a lot of young guys to count on. And obviously Hurst and Hill, you know, there's been issues with both those players. Um, you know, you're certainly hoping that, you know, both of them have the best year of their career, but you can't really bank on it. So South Carolina defensive tackle Zach Pick in 6'3", 291, moves well. Good hand work, is able to create separation. Even if he gets knocked off balance, he's a quick, quick guy to get his step back, get his focus back, uh, and get himself back in the play. Uh, you know, we don't know where anything stands with Perry on Winfrey. Obviously, the Browns have said they are standing by their player. He was at OTAs this week. Um, but when it's a legal process, you won't, you only hold the cards you hold. You know, I'm saying something happens with the legal process that he's going through and he has to be away from the Browns. That's out of their control, obviously, you know, because the league could step in here as far as, you know, an incident unbecoming da 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 da. <clears throat> so which means, you know, even though you did a good job trying to recreate this room here now, you've already got a loss, which you were unexpecting. So even if the veteran comes in, it could be this week and maybe that could change what the Browns would do at 98. Most likely, I don't think somebody's coming in this week, so you got to be ready to go. Zach Pickens, South Carolina, again, same thing. Browns like SEC players. They like guys who are proven. You know, you kind of get to see truly what they are when they are going against other pros. Zach Pickens, D tackle, South Carolina. So I like I like it. Six foot four, two ninety one. Um, I like <laughs> guys. I like my defensive line to be over six four. I like them six three. If I can get them six two, six three, cool. But if you have six four, that means you're elite. They talked about this in PFF. Um, you know, he is a, a guy that's far more talented than a sixty seven point three overall grade. Uh, he is inconsistent uh, at the moment. However, that's just part of the game. If you, if all these guys were mentioning, if they was consistent, they'd be in the top top uh, twenty. That's the, that's the difference between them and other top ten picks. Uh, he, his high end tape though does flash a, some exceptional game tape. He can, if he's on, he's a dominant player. He tested as one of his best athletes in his position, running a four eight nine, which trust me is very hard to do at six foot four two ninety one. I love the pick. Um, if the Browns chose to go that route, I'm definitely on it. Uh, and me and Jeff and Lockstep so far uh, in terms of what we look for in defensive linemen and, and what's available. I went a little different here at 111, and this is going to be interesting because come tomorrow, uh, we will finally get a pro day of Syracuse running back Sean Tucker. Uh, finally has medical clearance to work out, you know, I don't know that this is going to hold things back. Look, Sean Tucker in high school was a 55-meter sprint champion. He was a 100-meter sprint champion. He was a 200-meter sprint champion. So we ain't concerned about the speed here. Apparently, the young man has it and will have it. Um, you know, so we'll find out a little bit more on that and a little more clarification tomorrow. Um, I know this this area has been very popular with a lot of Browns fans as far as mocking another, a wide receiver to this spot here. But the question I have with that is you have Amari Cooper, you have Elijah Moore, you have Donovan Peoples-Jones, you have Marquise Goodwin, whatever role he's going to play. David Bell, I'm sure if out of all the young receivers, David Bell is the one guy the Browns are probably not going to give up here. 
So what's more important right now? Wide receiver possible six or running back 2A, 2B? Because we don't necessarily know what Jerome Ford is yet. I think we all have high hopes for Jerome Ford. But facts are facts. Eight carries on the season. We don't know nothing yet. I think Sean Tucker comes in and he can be a guy that can be used in the passing game. I think he could come in and conceivably be the best receiving running back on the roster the second he gets here. Um, the speed, the patience, this all shows and equates and works in lockstep with what the Browns offensive line is good at, what the theory of the Browns offensive line is. Sean Tucker, for me, it's a home run selection. And I think the Browns could get a lot better value at 98 or 111 because of the fact that running back is a little bit bigger need than drafting a wide receiver who could be competing for wide receiver five or wide receiver six, Jay. Listen, uh, you know, I'm all about I'm all about the speed, bro. I mean, this guy is, is is I love track speed because we need we need track speed wherever we can get it. It's up to the coaches to put him in the right position. This could be two guys you've added. Actually, this would be three guys you've added this offseason between Goodwin, between Moore, and possibly Sean Tucker. This could be three guys you added to your weapons on the offensive side of the ball who run four three. Hey, you know what? If you throw uh if you throw uh shorts in there, um you got a four by one team. Sure. <laughs> you got some you can work with. Uh we just need him to catch the rock. Uh but you know, I I love to I like the Tucker uh move at one eleven. Um, you know, now you look like you're just de developing and building some depth uh at, at the running back position. Um, and plus, you got a, a really good change of pace guy with Nick Chubb. He's the power guy. You want somebody to come in and catch the ball, maybe able to catch it out of the backfield and be a weapon that can take it to the house. I'm all for it. Uh, you know, I tell you what, uh, I, you know, we talk about these great draft people, right? We're always excited about the guys in the draft now, but we don't necessarily know if these guys are going to hit. And sometimes they actually are worse than a bus. They're a generational bus, and we'll talk about that coming up in the next sec segment, Jay. Absolutely. Jeff Lloyd, G. Bush, your latest lockdown rounds, your final Mock Draft Monday of the 2023 NFL Draft season. To all of you who make Lockdown Browns your first listen, you guys are all stars. Make sure you are subscribed. You have notifications on. There'll be a lot of content dropping this with week into the day wonders. Your appreciated audio size. Go to your favorite uh podcast site we are always available and we are always free uh we've got we've got down to number one on our biggest buses the 2010 series uh some of the names that we we've had on here so far we've seen trent richardson we've seen uh we, we've seen uh justin gilbert on this list Corey We've Coleman, all, Kiki Corey Mingo, Coleman. a veritable who's who of people nobody ever want to hear from again. <laughs> right. <laughs> These guys, and listen, the stat line be real short, but when you go to it based on based on the hype, based on what we've done, um, the number one bust of all time, we got to go to him, um, is Mr. Johnny Football. Um, when you look at it, uh, Johnny Football – because he was Johnny Football and because he did go in the first round and because of the hype around him, and, and ba it was an easy, catastrophic bust. It was it was easily the, the biggest bust, and it wasn't even close. Just because of what Johnny Manziel unapologetically admits to. I mean, he admits to the fact that he, he wasted Joe Thomas's time. He admits to the fact that he was just into partying, did not care about football. So usually most time a bust is a guy who will say, I will, I regret this. this. He had problems maybe with alcohol, maybe with drugs. Maybe he just wasn't a good fit on the field, or maybe he couldn't play. Johnny Manziel just admitted that he just did not care about any of that. Uh, and this is a quick quote to show you why. Manziel was drafted by the Browns with the 22nd pick in 2014 draft. Coming off a pretty good collegiate career, one that saw Manziel win the Heisman as a freshman in League Texas A&M to a Cotton Bowl victory over Oklahoma. Johnny Football was doing whatever he wanted to on the field for the Aggies. Um, then we talk about this and going all the way uh, down to where Cleveland drafted him. Uh, like others before, he led the franchise into a future, and he wanted to turn the organization around the Browns, much like every team in the NFL have missed on draft prospects. But with college career considered, Manziel had a ton of hype to live up to. He, he would eventually only uh, play 14 games in two seasons with the Browns, making eight starts 
He was two of two for six, uh, or excuse me, two and six record for those starts. For his career, he threw just 1,675 yards, seven touchdowns, seven picks, completing 57% of his passes, and he had a single rushing touchdown. Hey, not only was he a bust on the field, but off the field as well, with various stories of him partying, especially night before games. He was also investigated for domestic assault. Two years after drafting Johnny Manziel, the Cleveland Browns released him and moved on. Um, this pick proved to be a dud for the Browns, who were influenced by texts from Manziel to then uh, quarterback coach Daryl Dar Loggins. Um, and the text read, I want to wreck this league. Loggins informed his head coach, Mike Pettin, who made the draft, uh, made the call to draft Johnny Football. Jeff, my goodness, uh, what were your thoughts when they drafted Johnny Football game night? Well, firstly, first, the text went, obviously, Logan's got Logan's got it, forwarded it to Pettin, forwarded it to Jimmy Haslam. And for Jimmy Haslam, that was all he needed to see. Pull the trigger, baby. Pull the trigger. Um, the thing, and this is, you know, and look, Johnny, he did it to himself. Um, the thing was, is here he was at Texas A&M, and he did it all. Literally, the ball was in his hand. He ran around, made plays, kept it right. He was a one-man show at Texas A&M, even though he played with Mike Evans. The problem was is you needed him to come to the NFL and say, kid, you're going to have to buy in. You know what I'm saying? You need all 10 of these guys. And I think a guy like Johnny, within his mind, didn't believe that. He thought, you know, and it was, was it the, the, man, the, the man's hell mad. It wasn't going to work that way in the NFL. He was not that elite athlete. He was not built like Josh Allen and ran like Josh Allen. Yes, he was successful at Texas A&M. There's no question about it. But then you throw in the fact that, you know, basically, you know, IDGAF is the way he lived. It was about what are we doing tonight? Um, and, you know, times where, you know, injured and going, you know, like, you're, if you're injured, you don't go to Vegas. Like, like, what are you thinking, dude? Like, that's not the way this league works. And I'm sure there were plenty of guys in that locker room, and Joe Thomas being one of them. Like, yeah, there's ways you got to conduct yourselves here. And he ain't even coming close. And he's supposed to be the person that saves his franchise. I think we were all intrigued. And I think all of us wanted to say, hey, you know what? Maybe there's a way he can do this and he can pull this off in the NFL. Why not? He pulled it off at Texas A&M, beating quality teams. He did. It was fact. But the problem is, is, you know, he thought he was the show and didn't want to work. You know, th that's a terrible combination to come in with an ego that big and basically to tell everybody else, I'll be here on Sunday. It just doesn't work that way in the NFL. And obviously, you know, turned everybody away, wasn't ready. His first start wasn't prepared. You know, I mean, first start, you saw him taking snaps. He's turning the wrong way. And everybody, oh, I don't know if that's on the running back or on the quarterback. He started like week 13. All of a sudden now in week 13, the running back forgot which hole the play was supposed to go to. Yeah, and that's not the way it worked. Just didn't care. And, and it's sad, um, you know, because he could have been one of the greater stories, you know, in the NFL, certainly one of the best stories of the Cleveland Browns could certainly be their quarterback today. Um, I just didn't care. Didn't put out the effort. And, you know, it's just, it's just sad. And it's funny. You actually dropped a Nick Cannon reference when we were doing this segment earlier and you know johnny as we know got married johnny got divorced his ex-wife yeah. is now one of the nick cannon baby mama list uh yeah. so and i'm sure that didn't do much uh you know more for johnny <laughs> the type of guy he is um you know he was a guy that had all the talent in the world needed to come to the nfl and just basically be humble and do his work and he was neither you know i you know with the joel johnny man i i, I raised my hand on this one you know, everybody has a guy. I was catfished by Johnny Menzel. Um, every every Browns fan at some point in time has been enamored to a point with some some guy, whether it's Trent Richardson, whether it's Johnny Manziel, whether it's Justin Gilbert, whether it's, it's you know, all these guys come in and you think they're going to be great, they're going to be awesome, and then you get them there and you're like, hold on, this isn't the person I, you pretended to be online. Hey, where, where's that one guy that, that was, <laughs> was running around in Texas A&M? You're not that guy. So I was going to the hill. I died on that hill for Johnny Manziel. I said, man, no more. I, I got to a point where I said, look, I like some pre I like different guys. I like your skill set. But until you get on that doggone field, I don't care if you was the number one pick. I need you to show me something. So look, I've been production uh, driven ever since. Hey, I like Deshaun Watson when he came in. But, hey, you better do something this year. I ain't playing around. Uh, so that's where we at with it. And, and I think Johnny Manziel – 
easily earned the biggest bus. So we we uh, we will thank you for being part of our, our series. Let us know if you like series like this uh, in the comment section, and we may be able to do it for position groups. We may be able to do it for different areas. We only went to 2010. We could go possibly back to 2000. Um, so let us know who your number one bus was. Let us know if, if you believe Johnny Manziel was, and let us know if you like this type of content so we can get to stuff that you want out there. And we can obviously go with some of the more positive draft selections here over the few years because there certainly have been some as well. Um, it's going to be a big week coming. I can't even begin to lie to you. Um, as far as your content, when the Browns start making picks on Friday, look, pick 74, we'll see the way that works. Um, there could be some short things for me solo. You know, G's going to most likely have Cavs coverage that night to be have his eyes on too. So, but, you know, we'll be around all weekend. Obviously, you're going to get all your Browns draft coverage. We're going to put out a ton of stuff for you this week. We'll go to certain positions. We'll go through positions groups pick a guy or two that g and i both like here uh so a lot of content continuing to come here this week uh which is obviously nfl draft week for me one of my favorite weeks of the year no doubt he is garrett bush panelist ultimate cleveland sports show monday through friday 11 to 1 on youtube uh guys we bring down a lot of things certainly the guardians the cavaliers playoff series browns draft coverage will be a ton of stuff coming there saturday g will open up the barbershop uh, you can get anything and everything, including sports wise, from Garrett there. Make sure you're following at GBush91. Myself at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. The show at Locked On Browns. Follow back account. Make sure to check the Locked On NFL Scouting Series this week with Joe Marino and Kyle Krabs. These guys are fantastic. They basically cover your NFL teams from soup to nuts, players, front office. I think they're going to slowly start matriculating into what food is on the menu at the concession stand. So make sure you're checking out all that as well this has been your daily delivery of all things dog pound lgb on the lob let's go browns